In this video, we'll be going over the best evil hero cards. A small sub-archetype within the hero archetype, which is comprised of evil versions of elemental hero monsters. And at number 10, we have Supreme King's Castle. This is one of the newest pieces of evil hero support, and is simply a field spell which allows you to fusion summon your evil hero fusion monsters without having to use dark fusion. Basically, all of the evil hero fusion monsters have a restriction where they can only be special summoned with dark fusion, and cannot be special summoned in other ways. Dark Fusion is simply a spell card that has an effect similar to Polymerization, except it only allows you to fusion summon Fiend-type fusion monsters and grants the fusion monster an effect where it can't be targeted with card effects for the rest of the turn. So it is, strictly speaking, a better version of Polymerization for the evil heroes, but Polymerization isn't a super good fusion spell card, and not one you really want to use unless you have to. The target immunity for a turn is nice, but not really worth running Dark Fusion. So Supreme King's Castle allows you to bypass this pretty bad downside to all of the evil hero fusion monsters, and lets you use things like super polymerization for your evil heroes. Although there is another evil hero fusion card which is really good, so this effect of Supreme King's Castle isn't that big of a deal. It also has the effect where if one of your fiend type monsters is battling, you can send an evil hero from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard in order to grant your monster extra attack until the end of the turn, equal to 200 times that monster's level. And there are some good targets to send to the graveyard, like Evil Hero Malicious Fiend in order to get a high attack fiend monster in the graveyard, or Evil Hero Sinister Necrom, which has an Orchist Harp Horror-like effect. However, none of these are super necessary unless you want to play a pure Evil Hero deck for whatever reason. So they are technically nice effects to have, but not super good where they might be at a higher spot on this list. And at number 9, we have Evil Hero Malicious Etch. This is the highest level evil hero monster that goes in the main deck, and all it does is have piercing battle damage with 2600 attack, and has an additional clause, where it can sometimes tribute itself with one less tribute if your opponent controls a monster. And the main reason you'd use Evil Hero Malicious Edge is because it's required for one of the fusion monsters, Evil Hero Malicious Fiend, and because Evil Hero Sinister Necrom can allow you to special summon it directly from the deck, using a card from the graveyard. And if you're able to get out a 2600 attack monster with piercing damage, basically for free thanks to Sinister Necrom, that's not half bad. Evil Hero Malicious Edge is probably one of the strongest cards that can be special summoned from the deck with the card's spell speed 1 graveyard effect. And that's the only reason it makes this list. It has seen play for exactly that reason before, but generally evil heroes are left out of normal hero decks, except for the ones in the top 4 spots on this list. Although in the earlier days of the game, when this card first came out, it was one of the strongest one tribute monsters you could bring out with its 2600 attack, as the conditions for bringing it out with one tribute is simply your opponent controlling any monster, so it could consistently come out with one tribute. And at number 8, we have Evil Hero Lightning Golem. This is a fusion monster which can only be special summoned with the effect of Dark Fusion, a condition that exists on all Evil Hero fusions, so I won't mention it for the rest of the video. And its other effect is simply, once per turn, you can target one monster in the field and then destroy it. There is no cost, drawback, or condition for this, so it's just a straight up, once per turn, pop one monster on the field. This card is the evil hero version of Elemental Hero Thunder Giant, which has the same stats and a similar effect, although with a lot more restrictions. Where it can also destroy monsters on the field, but it requires you to discard one card to use the effect, only works on face-up monsters, and that monster needs to have an attack that's less than this card's attack, which is 2400 baseline. So Evil Hero Lightning Golem is quite the upgrade over its non-evil counterpart, and it's actually a really good effect. It's pretty rare for cards to have effects to destroy monsters without cost or downsides associated to it. Although even with its nice, costless, restrictionless destruction, it never really saw competitive play. Although only three of the Evil Hero Fusion monsters ever did, so that's not really a mark against the card itself. And at number 7, we have Evil Hero Malicious Fiend, one of the three Evil Hero Fusion monsters that did actually see some competitive play. Although not a lot of it. This card is one of the few unique Evil Hero monsters that isn't an Evil Hero version of an Elemental Hero monster, and because it's unique, its materials are just Evil Hero Malicious Edge plus one level 6 or higher Fiend type monster. And with an impressive baseline attack of 3500, it was basically played specifically because of that high attack point value, because its effects are kind of situational. During your opponent's battle phase, this card basically has a staunch defender effect, where all of your opponent's monsters are flipped to face up attack position, and they all must attack this card if able. So if your opponent has a full field of a whole bunch of weak, small monsters, then that could probably win you the game. Especially if you have the field spell card out Supreme King's Castle, and buffs its attack by sending another version of itself from the extra deck to the graveyard. Since that attack increase lasts until the end of the turn, 
you can have a bigger buff beat stick that your opponent has to crash into. But I'm pretty sure you can avoid its effect entirely if you just don't enter your battle phase. Although, the reason this card saw play was because it was just a big beat stick you can bring out pretty easily, as one of its materials could be any level 6 or higher fiend monster. So it allowed you to play other things besides the mediocre materials that were required of a lot of the other evil hero fusion monsters, like evil hero lightning golem or evil hero inferno wing, which require two low level vanilla monsters as its materials. And at number 6, we have evil hero inferno prodigy. This is a level 2 monster which has the effect where it can special summon itself from your hand in attack position if you control no monsters. In addition, if this card is used as a tribute for the summon of a hero monster, you get to draw one card during the end phase. So, the obvious synergy with this card is to use it in order to bring out Evil Hero Malicious Edge, and then draw a card during the end of the turn. Although the card itself is just a hero monster that can special summon itself from the hand pretty easily, which means it can be used as materials for extra deck plays. Back in 2010, this card was used in D.Va Hero decks, which was a synchro-focused deck using Deep Sea D.Va and hero cards. Since Infernal Prodigy could special summon itself from your hand and was level 2, it kind of coupled well with that playstyle of going into different types of synchro monsters, and then using hero monsters in the graveyard as materials to go into Elemental Hero Absolute Zero with Miracle Fusion. And at number 5, we have Evil Hero Dark Gaia. This is another unique Evil Hero monster, which means it isn't based on an Elemental Hero monster, which is probably why it has such a good effect and materials. This card's materials are simply any one fiend type monster and any one rock type monster, and then its attack becomes a combined attack of its two materials. So, this thing can get to some really high levels of attack if you just use two incredibly high attack monsters as materials. So, this thing could easily get over 6,000 attack when it was brought out. And then it also has the effect that when this card declares an attack, you can change all of your opponent's defense position monsters to face up attack position and negate any flip effects that would activate at the time. And back in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Online days when this card first came out, it was a powerhouse in the meta game, and people were crying for the card to get banned because people were using cards like Kai's the Shadow Monarch and Valkyrion the Magna Warrior to bring it up with 5900 attack, or 7000 attack if they had a copy of Evil Hero Malicious Fiend in the graveyard, which is a crazy high attack for a card that can flip your opponent's defense position monsters into attack position and be brought up with materials from your hand or graveyard. There is a big downside to Evil Hero Dark Gaia though, in that its attack is entirely dependent on its effect. So, if this card's effect is negated in any way, it will lose all of its attack points and get set to zero. So cards like Infinite Impermanence and Effect Veal are completely counter this card. And I guess that's what Dark Fusion is for, making it target immune for the turn it comes out so it can be a big beat stick. Although in the normal TCG, Evil Hero Dark Gaia only saw play a handful of times, mainly in Infernoid decks that ran Gaia Plate the Earth Giant as their rock type for fusion summons. Although it wasn't a popular thing and more of an exception to the rule. Now, seeing as there's lots of really good fiend-type monsters, and pretty much all of the evil heroes are fiend-type, choosing an appropriate rock monster was always the hardest part of running Dark Gaia. That was until 2019, when Konami released a really good evil hero Dark Gaia support card called Nibiru the Primal Being. Nibiru is a 3000 attack rock monster, which is a hand trap that allows you to completely tribute all monsters in the field after your opponent has summoned 5 or more times in the main phase and then give them a token with a combined attack and defense equal to all the monsters tributed, and then you get to special summon Nibiru from your hand. So with Nibiru both having a high attack for a rock monster, and having a very useful effect, it's just been a huge boost to evil hero decks ever since 2019. And it was so good that it's actually played outside of evil hero decks all the time, and is probably one of the strongest hand traps ever added to the game post Max C. And at number 4, we have evil hero Sinister Necrom. This card was released in the new wave of Evil Hero support alongside cards like Supreme King's Castle and only a month after Nibiru, and actually has a really powerful effect. You can banish this card from your graveyard in order to special summon any one Evil Hero monster from your hand or deck, just as long as it's not another copy of itself. The effect is a hard once per turn, but the effect to special summon a monster from your deck is incredibly strong when attached to a purely graveyard effect. Just a reminder that Orcist Harp Horror is banned for having a similar effect and Destiny Hero Malicious is semi-limited to two copies for a similar effect. However, there are so few evil hero monsters, and hero decks don't really play evil hero monsters that want to be special summoned from the deck, that it kind of flies under the radar. This has got to be one of the strongest effects I've seen on a card that rarely sees competitive play, even though hero decks can pretty easily send monsters from the deck to the graveyard, especially dark monsters, thanks to Fusion Destiny and Destiny Hero Dangerous. And while Evil Hero Malicious Edge is an excellent target to special summon from the deck, it's not really a card you want to use in modern hero decks outside of cheating it out of the deck with Sinister Necrom. 
So Evil Hero Sinister Necrom is definitely high on this list for its incredibly powerful effect, but hasn't seen anywhere near as much play as the top three. And at number three, we have Dark Calling. This is a fusion spell card, which was released two months after Dark Fusion in the TCG, which can be used to fusion summon a monster that requires Dark Fusion, and allows it to be treated as if it were fusion summoned by the effect of Dark Fusion. But it allows you to use materials from your hand or graveyard. And this is what made Dark Calling see play over Dark Fusion almost exclusively. Because being able to banish the materials from your graveyard in addition to your hand made this one of the best early fusion spell cards in the game. You see, one of the benefits of polymerization-like effects is the ability to use cards from your hand as materials, since it's a lot easier to get a card in your hand than it is to get them on the field. It's even easier to just accumulate resources in the graveyard, though. So while cards like Miracle Fusion existed already, which also allowed you to use materials from the graveyard in order to fusion summon, Miracle Fusion only allowed you to use targets from your field or graveyard, but not your hand. Whereas Dark Calling allowed you to use your hand instead of your field, and while there are debates about which one is better, I think Dark Calling's ability to use the hand instead of the field is actually a little bit better for what Dark Calling was used for. Ideally, you want all of your materials to be from the graveyard, so it doesn't really matter in that respect as both of them can use materials from the graveyard, but as a secondary option, the hand is superior to getting cards on the field. Especially when Dark Calling was used on cards that can't even be summoned in the deck they were played in, like Valkyrie on the Magna Warrior. Dark Calling is also why Evil Hero Malicious Fiend saw play, and why they were completely fine with the card hitting the graveyard because then it gave you a 3500 attack fiend monster in order to use Dark Calling to go into an evil hero Dark Gaia. And because Dark Calling is so good at getting out evil hero fusions, there isn't really a reason to use Supreme King's Castle, because there's not really a better generic fusion spell card than what Dark Calling is already capable of doing on its own. Besides maybe allowing niche uses of super polarization with evil hero Dark Gaia. And basically because Dark Calling is so good, no one really cared that evil heroes could only be summoned with that card because it was way superior to polymerization anyway. The biggest downside to Dark Calling was the fact that it was almost completely unsearchable. That was until 2019. And at number two, we have Evil Hero Adusted Gold. This is another new wave Evil Hero support and is the only Evil Hero main deck monster that sees heavy competitive play in hero decks. And what it does is allow you to discard this card from your hand in order to add a Dark Fusion or card that specifically lists Dark Fusion in its text from your deck to your hand. So basically, it's a searcher for Dark Calling, and that's exactly why it sees competitive play. Because it's really easy to search out a Dusted Gold to then get into a Dark Calling. It's also a 2100 attack level 4 monster, with the only downside that it can't attack unless you control a fusion monster. So situationally, it's a decent level 4 beat stick. So if it does hit the field, it's not half bad. But it's 100% used just as a middleman to Dark Calling. And this is kind of why Evil Hero Sinister Necrom doesn't really see play. It has a really good effect to special summon an evil hero from your deck, but you kind of want evil hero adusted gold in your hand, not on the field. That way you can use its hand effect to search out Dark Calling. Now, one of the reasons evil hero adusted gold doesn't see as much widespread play in hero decks, despite being a really good card, is because of real card price reasons. One copy of this card goes for over $120 each, and there has yet to be a reprint of this card as of making this video which would lower the price and make it more readily available. And at number one, we have Evil Hero Malicious Bane. This is another new Evil Hero monster, which was released alongside Evil Hero Adusted Gold, and is definitely the best target to special summon with Dark Calling. Its materials are simply any one Evil Hero monster, plus any level five or higher monster. And Evil Hero Malicious Bane's effect is once per turn, you can destroy all of your opponent's monsters that have an attack less than or equal to this card's attack which will then increase this card's attack by 200 for every monster destroyed. It also locks you out of attacking for the rest of the turn, except with hero monsters. So with the baseline attack of 3000, and hero decks playing cards like Elemental Hero Sunrise, which passively increases the attack of all of your monsters even more, it's pretty easy to just wipe out your opponent's entire field with Evil Hero Militia's Bane. Especially since it has amazing protection on top of its effect, where it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. And what do you know, simply putting Evil Hero Adusted Gold in the graveyard in order to search out Dark Calling gives you the Evil Hero necessary in the graveyard to bring out Malicious Bane. And since its other materials is just any level 5 or higher monster, that's pretty easy to accomplish in hero decks with all of their fusion monsters being level 5 or higher, as well as a lot of their normal main deck additions, like Elemental Hero Honest Neos, Vision Hero Ferris, or Destiny Hero Malicious. Evil Hero Malicious Bane is easily the best of the Evil Hero monsters. And it's also really easy to bring out thanks to the combo with the Dusted Gold and Dark Calling, which is why it's included in pretty much any hero deck that can afford to play the cards, as they're quite expensive. 
If price isn't an issue though, it plays so well with how modern hero decks work that there's really no reason not to play them. A full board wipe on a high attack monster you can bring out with only materials from the graveyard, you can put in the graveyard by just doing your combos like normal, is kind of good in any deck. The fact that it's dark attribute and has hero in its name, so it allows you to play nicely alongside other popular hero cards like Fusion Destiny, definitely helps in its favor. Alright, and that's the list. As always, if you think I missed any of the other really good evil hero cards that should have made this list, or have ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. You guys do a really good job of offering suggestions in the comments. The channel has a very high comment to view ratio because of how much you guys love to make suggestions, which just gives me an unlimited amount of ideas, really.